uh, Unit 13, Part 2, Scale of Production. And again, back in Unit 9, we discussed some of the issues of scale of production. This is going to be a brief look at solutions and ways to handle the issues involved in scaling. Most of the issues, many of them anyway, and I believe almost all, can be minimized by proper planning from the beginning. If it's intended that an operation will be scaled up at a future date, when you start your operation, if you think later, you know, I'd like to grow from two acres to four acres, or I'd like to make this a, a big operation, um, then looking for sites that allow upsizing um, without going to remote sites may be a good idea. Um, there are issues with that, though, because you have to purchase or rent or obtain the entire site. And if you're not using it all from the beginning, you have land that's not being productive, that's costing you money either in terms of rent or taxes. Um, depending on the plan and the time frame for doing this scaling, um, however, it may be worth looking at uh, a site that can accommodate your growth. And it may be possible to purchase portions of a site, say a brownfield, um, purchase a couple of acres with options to purchase additional land um, in the future. If multiple sites are unavoidable or even actually desired, which can be the case, um, then locating sites that have similar growing conditions, as we discussed issues of growing conditions, can help because what works at one site is gonna work more or less similarly at the other sites that you have. If one site is uh, full sun um, with excellent soil and your second site is uh, say partially shaded with poor soil, what works at the first site isn't necessarily gonna work at the second site. If you can find sites that are similar, um, it's, it's easier to transplant your operation uh, from one area to another. Also, create a model that plans for expansion. Then refine that model as you operate the original site through trial and error. Find out what works. Document the procedures that work. That goes a long way towards making your process repeatable at other locations. This whole idea of documentation of procedures that work is the basis for creating successful franchises. You know, all of the fast food franchises kind of look the same, operate the same, the food tastes the same from site to site because of this, because each thing that worked previously has been documented and those things can be used at new sites. Creating that documentation also gives you a basis for training when you hire uh, new employees to work at other sites, you now have what is essentially a training manual. So documentation is one of the most important things you can do regardless of where you start and regardless of the scale you want to end up at. Now, planning for growth from the very beginning is the best way to ensure success when you're scaling an operation up. Um, as we mentioned, document each procedure from preparing the ground to creating composting facilities to the general layout of your planting areas. Um, how are you planting the plants for the seeds? How are you watering? How are you harvesting? Don't be afraid to change things when things, when changing something results in higher efficiency, or simply an easier to use system. Don't get married to an idea that locks you into some inefficient way of operating. Um, having good data, this documentation, and then following up on that documentation with actual field notes about how things work is huge. 
when you set up additional sites or expand on a current site, if you've documented the amount of time each phase of the work requires, for instance, how long does it take to get the beds ready in the springtime? How long does it take to cover each bed with a layer of uh, compost or mulch if that's being used? Um, how long does it take to plant however many plants of a certain type? Are you planting, for instance, are you planting beans or peas from seeds in the soil? Are you starting them in a cold frame or a greenhouse and then moving plants out? Um, how long does it take to plant a tomato plant or a pepper plant? Um, document those sorts of things so you have an idea if your new sites are meeting the production and efficiency goals that they have to meet in order to be successful. Record all of your costs, including transportation costs, uh, any labor costs, rent or mortgage, power, you know, electricity, um, water, equipment, and so on. Be as accurate as possible in recording those costs so you have an idea what to expect when you need to scale up at a new site. Get your workers invested in the project. Um, it's been well documented that higher workers, hired workers are seldom as productive as the owner who's invested in the project, financially and emotionally. Um, it's very difficult for someone who isn't as tied into a project, either financially or emotionally, to be as productive, to even feel the urgency to be that productive. So having workers who are bought in goes a long way to having them be as productive as you need. How do you do that? There are three main ways. One, employees should know what's going on. Explain what the purpose of the project is. If it's to make money in urban agriculture, they need to know that, that you need to make money with this project. If it's to provide an educational opportunity, they need to know that. It, the workers need to know exactly what's going on. Therefore, it's easier to explain exactly what's expected of them. Keep the workers involved in decision making. If they're the ones out there every single day, planting, harvesting, watering, uh, they have experience that's valuable for you. And having them involved in decision making and documenting things just makes them part of the process. And if it's possible, you have opportunities to, for workers to advance as they learn and become more productive. Now, it may not be possible on a small operation to have, you know, one level of worker and then a, then a supervisory level and then someone above that. It, it might not be possible. However, um, workers can be given titles that show that you appreciate what they've been able to learn and what they've been able to do. So you might have, you know, an associate gardener that advances to gardener to a senior gardener, and they may all be doing the same work, but there's some recognition of what's going on. So involved employees, or in the case of co-op projects, involved partners um, make the most enjoyable and productive situations. And it's not just in urban agriculture. Um, so it's worth having the workers invested. So this slide is called scaling by not duplicating. So most of what we've discussed about scaling has involved duplicating process efficiently, but sometimes scaling is best accomplished by not duplicating everything at a new site. Um, let's take a look at some examples. You may have a hoop house to start plants earlier in the growing season. It may be more efficient to simply expand that hoop house if necessary at its present location. 
to provide seedlings to multiple operations than it is to build hoop houses at each remote location. You may have the required resources at the first site, but not at the second site, such as qualified workers. You may have worker, workers or a worker who is an expert at starting new plants. You may have electricity or uh, available water, sufficient space, all of that at the original site that may not be there at an additional site. So you may not want to duplicate site one at site two, but some of the processes perhaps you do. Um, expanding an existing hoop house, for instance, is always, almost always more cost effective than building an additional one. If you have a hoop house that's say 40 feet long, adding a series of hoops to it to make it 60 feet long or 80 feet long is generally less expensive than building a whole new hoop house at a new location. And it's generally more efficient to heat a single larger structure of this type than multiple small ones. So efficiencies aren't always gained by duplicating the exact thing. Finally, any specialized materials that you need to build or expand your hoop house, such as the frames or the hoops, such as the plastic, such as the batten board that holds things on, such as the strapping that goes over the top to hold the plastic down, only need to be delivered to one location. It can be a much more efficient. So that kind of brings us to this idea of centralization versus the distribution of processes. With the example of the hoop house in mind, you can see that there are many processes that may be more efficient if they're centralized. Um, having a single farm stand for sales may make more sense than having several. You may be able to sell materials from multiple locations using the same physical building and even possibly the same number of workers by centralizing that. If you had a farm stand at each location, you need someone to staff each one. Um, maybe not the best way to go. Centralized purchasing of supplies is almost always more efficient. Um, quantity discounts can often be had and accounting is more immediate and simplified. Um, it's easier to know exactly what you've got. Um, and there's less chance for error as communicating things back and forth between sites. Um, so in general, centralization of the behind the scenes processes, sales and marketing, distribution, accounting, purchasing is more efficient then distributing those processes, provided the other sites are involved in the decision making. You know, just telling the workers at one site, this is what's going to happen, and here's your stuff, um, can be less efficient than having them involved and having them help make the decisions about what's going to be planted or how much of each crop is going to be planted or that sort of thing. But then purchasing all that stuff centrally to take advantage of any um, quantity discounts and efficiencies to be had. Um, timing, something we haven't talked a lot about, um, but timing of scaling can be absolutely critical to the success of a project. Um, for instance, if you're going to purchase a site, purchasing it just before you put it into production can minimize the outlay for your rent or mortgage or taxes or whatever while the site's unproductive. Let's say you're going to start working the soil and getting certain early crops into the ground in April. Then getting the site at the beginning of April may be financially the best decision. Getting the site at the end of the previous season and paying rent or mortgage um, for that whole period of time uh, can be quite expensive and maybe less efficient. 
Uh, same thing goes for hiring new employees. Less downtime means more production per dollar paid. But of course, you have to give sufficient time um, for training that whatever training might be required when you hire new employees. Um, the same goes for purchasing a new site or obtaining, renting a new site. Um, while it's financially more efficient, usually, in terms of your mortgage or your rent, or, um, taxes, and that sort of thing, to bring that site online as close to the time that you need to put it in production as possible, uh, you still need to allow time to do things like uh, amend the soil, install security, um, set up uh, raised beds if that's going to happen, whatever work needs to be done. So it may be necessary to get it on board a little earlier than right when you want to start production, depending on what you're doing. Those are the kinds of decisions that the owner has to make. Um, also, this next point, making large purchases during the off season, there's a trade off here. It can result in significant trading savings. So the example here is if you're gonna buy a rototiller in October or November at the end of the season, when the uh, place that sells them is going to have to store them through the winter until people want to buy them again next spring, um, you can often get real and significant savings. You have to weigh that against the fact that you're going to have to outlay that cash in the fall. Um, that's not going to be available to use through the winter. And you're going to have a machine sitting idle until the uh, next growing season. But so you can weigh the pros and cons of doing those things and make the best decision. Uh, you have to weigh the money saved versus the money tied up, essentially. How about scaling up to a completely different system? This may not even really be scaling up in the truest sense of the word, but what's often implied in discussions about scaling up operations is simply to duplicate what works in one location to another location. And that is undoubtedly an efficient way to go, especially if what you've done at one place is very well documented and you have the data to back that up. Um, however, there are times when a new location may lend itself to doing something different. You may get a new location that's more suited, for instance, to livestock than the first location. You may have a location that's in a residential area. Um, livestock wouldn't be a good fit, and you're growing solely um, vegetable or fruit crops there. You may obtain a new location, which maybe is a little farther out, or maybe it's surrounded by an industrial area. And uh, livestock may be a fit. You may have to consider, yeah, I'm going to have livestock here. It's a completely different thing than we've been doing, but it makes sense for this operation. Also, certain crops are less perishable um, than others, obviously. And it may be better to grow them in outlying sites so that they can be harvested and transported with uh, minimal loss and save the close-in sites for items that are more perishable. Um, or a new site may have more land available for growing crops that require a lot of space, such as pumpkins or melons, or those uh, types of things that need room to spread out. Um, a new site might have a better source of water. And so crops that require more irrigation can be more easily grown there, something different than what you've been doing. So evaluate each site in terms not only of how you could duplicate what you're doing, but is what you're currently doing the best use of that new site? 
sometimes trying to force a site to be a duplicate of the original isn't the best use and you might be more successful doing something um, different. Different site, different product, same methods. Well, while the crop or livestock grown at a new site may be different, you can still transplant many of the same methods that you used previously, and particularly the methods of developing methods. What I mean by that is find out through research what people feel works best, implement it the way that works best, and then document what happens. Track the site productivity, the cost, revenue, methods of work, and don't be afraid, as we mentioned previously, to make adjustments that may increase productivity or efficiency. Even if it's different than what you're doing somewhere else, as we discussed in the previous slide, sometimes a new site requires a slightly different way of doing things. And most importantly, communicate. Frequent discussions among all the workers at all the sites about the methods, the crops, new ideas, will keep things operating more efficiently. Get input from the workers on what works and what doesn't, and then verify that that's truly the case. And if it is, you're in a position to make an informed decision about changing part of what you're doing in order to become more efficient. So, final words on keys to scaling. Scaling is a complex process and entire books have been written on the subject. There are courses available at business schools um, that cover this. But what it boils down to is finding the things that work and also the things that don't work and refining processes to make work easier and more efficient and more consistent. Sometimes we'll give up a little bit of efficiency or profit for consistency because it might make something easier to manage. The key to transplanting procedures from one location to another is documentation. If an employee has a question about how to do something and they can go to an operating manual, open it up and see how it needs to be done in a really well-documented, clearly explained way, that's often much more efficient than calling you up at site number one and saying, how do you do this? And you having to drop what you're doing and explain it or even go to the other site to show them how to do it. Having documentation is the key to transplanting procedures. Communication is the key to keeping those procedures operating smoothly. And involvement, employee involvement, is the key to being able to continually monitor and improve your procedures and operations. And finally, flexibility is the key to having everything work at a larger scale while maintaining productivity and efficiency. This concludes the presentation for Unit 13.